So before we head to PRI, I've got a number of things I need to accomplish. First things first, Tim Weaver's coming from West Virginia to come pick up his small block Chevy that he won in the 427 giveaway. The other thing is, I need to take care of the mud in the driveway. Good morning. Good morning. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> Vicki welcomed Tim into the shop, and we got straight to business getting the engine ready to load in his pickup and draining the block. How many shirts did you buy? Three. So you were actually watching the live feed, right? Yeah. And Vicky pulled your name. Yeah. And you were, and you're like, there must be another Tim Weaver. Yeah, there must be another. There must be another Tim Weaver that entered in West Virginia. So then we called you. Yep. Now I almost jumped up out of the. <laughs> are you ready to put that thing in that truck and turn oh, it yeah. loose? Oh yeah. We'll, are, are you gonna spread it? We'll turn it loose. We'll all love it. All right. It'll be fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Once we had all the antifreeze drained out of the block, I introduced Tim to his new 950 E85 ATM carburetor and went over some details and specifics on his nitrous kit from Nitrous Express. I then placed the order with Bubba Rafferty at Perfect Converter Company for a brand new purpose-built Turbo 400 nitrous converter for Tim's C10 pickup. Finally, it was time to back Tim's pickup truck in and load up his new 427. Since he's got a five and a half hour drive home, Possibly in the rain, Vicky hooked Tim up with some trash bags and tape to wrap the engine up. Unfortunately, since we're pressed for time, Tim didn't get an opportunity to drive the 427 in my Nova. Since the 421 in my Malibu and the 427 out of my Nova are so similar, I decided to take Tim for a little ride in the car so he can get some idea as to what these engines run like, and more importantly, how they cruise. Both the 427 that Tim won in the giveaway and the 421 in my Malibu have TrickFlow 230 heads, TrickFlow R intakes, ISKI hydraulic roller camshafts with Johnson ISKI lifters, ATM E85 carburetors, melling timing chain sets, and shark tooth billet aluminum oil pumps, scat rotating assemblies with J&E pistons, World Products Motown 2 blocks, and ATI 8-inch dampeners. The main differences is in the stroke of the crankshaft and the compression ratio. So our little drive down to Buckeye Lake to see Mark at A1 should give Tim a really good idea as to what to expect out of his engine. What are you doing, Buckwee? Taking up part bucket buddy Ford. You just got to meet Uncle Bucko for the yeah. first time. Is now, he any different in person than he is on camera? Exactly the same. <laughs> so now it's time to introduce Tim to Thing 2. You're gonna get to meet Thing, Thing. 2. Oh my. Next up is a game of Stump the Chump. We need a water pump for a 68 Volkswagen Beetle. This is the guy that won the 427 mansion well, out of my Nova. Awesome. That's awesome. Oh, so that's the guy that stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> Hook him up with a set of eight or nine plugs. Eight or nine. Eight or nines. Yeah. Probably eights would be best. I think I have them in stock. Do you really? I think so. Maybe well, you should by now. Eight or ten sets, probably. <laughs> Real place. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that Tim had a fresh set of plugs in his engine when he went to fire it up. I got a question for you. Okay. Is his head as shiny in person as it is on video? A little more? Yeah, a little more baby. Looking a little dry today? Yeah. Once we got done terrorizing Mark and picking up a set of spark plugs, Tim and I decided to go get some lunch. So we jumped back into Malibu and drove down closer to the lake to Pizza Cottage. With the busy schedule that I've got lately, I don't get much time just to hang out with people and visit. And this turned out to be a really good opportunity to sit down and talk to Tim about his truck and his plans for it once he gets this engine put in. What do you think? You like it? Oh yeah, best pizza I've had in a while. <laughs> After lunch, we managed to find a little bit of dry pavement and made a pull on the Malibu just to give him some idea as to how good these engines run. Well, I guess you're on your way. Yes. You're going to put that engine to good use. Very good. Like, use. that's, ah, uh, I was so worried. Like, you never know who's going to end up with it or what's going to happen to it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was just picturing, like, somebody would, you know, put it in a mud truck or, like, that engine is a really, really nice street engine. You rode in the Malibu. Yeah. And that is literally the same engine, just with a shorter stroke and a dome piston. And I really think that 427 runs better than the engine in the Malibu. And the Malibu runs good. It runs very well. <laughs> we cracked into it one time, didn't we? Yes. But it drives nice. Like yes. it's, you couldn't have asked for a better combination to put in your truck because it does have air conditioning. It does have power steering. It does have power brakes. And that engine was built specifically to do just what you're going to do with it. Yes. 
You can race it if you want, but you don't ever have to adjust valves. It makes plenty of power to haul something heavy. You know, that truck's probably 4,200 pounds, I'm guessing. 40, at least 4,000. Yeah. And the Malibu's 3,850 plus, what do you weigh? 200? 140 pounds. All right, so we were 3,950 3, to almost 4,000 mm -hmm. with me and you in the car, full tank of fuel, a little bit of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> And that set thing, spark plug. yeah, and a set of spark plug. I mean, that thing runs pretty good. Yeah, it jumps right up and goes. Mm -hmm. Very responsive. Oh yeah, there's no, <laughs> no, there's no waiting on it to come no, in. It comes <laughs> in right now. Well, good luck with it. So you're gonna, you're gonna maybe bring it back out, and we'll take it to trails and run it uh, yeah. once you get the engine in the truck. Yeah, we can do that. I got a couple little th other little things I want to do. Um, change the steering column. Probably put a new wire and harness in it. Okay. Maybe, maybe maybe some cool things out back, but we're not. Oh, okay. Sure okay. Oh, he was talking about putting big tires on. I said, oh no. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might have a fifteen by fourteen cruiser on the back of it okay. when it's all said and done. All right. Well, I mean that'll help you for driving it around on the street, yeah. and getting some traction. But yep. It'll all right. Be buddy. a nice pro street cruiser. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming up and picking the motor up, and it was great meeting you. Yep. It was great meeting you all. Good luck with it. I hope you enjoy it because I have definitely enjoyed having it here and oh, I'm going to build me another one. It will be thoroughly enjoyed and every ounce of power will get used. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, buddy. Thank we'll you. see you, man. So now that I've got the 427 pulled out of the Nova and it's been delivered to its new owner, the next thing on my agenda is dealing with the driveway, which has become sopping wet, mucky and muddy, and an epic source of frustration for me and Vicky. Billy and I also want to get started running the water line from the house out to the new shop. So while the two of us are back at the house, Vicky ran into the airport to pick up Tess. Tess flew in a couple days early from California to help me film this video and take some footage for me while we're at PRI. By the time Tess and Vicky were back from the airport, Billy and I had started the process of digging down next to the foundation of the house to run the water line through the basement wall and out to the new shop. It's much colder here than it is out in California, and the cold temperatures have caused quite a few problems lately, like the oil cooler lines leaking on Tess and Tony's excursion, which Bucko assures me he has taken care of. Where in the hell have you been? I ain't got all day waiting for you to play with your dog. Oh, you're out of your freaking mind. I've been on you since 9.30 this morning. Oh, bullshit. Is this thing fixed now? Yes, Tony's shit box is fixed. Are you sure? right now unless you touch it. If you remember a few videos back, the oil cooler lines had leaked every ounce of oil out of the crankcase onto my driveway. Jeremy claims he has it fixed and the truck should fire right up. So far so good for the excursion and Uncle Buckwheat. I took it into the car wash to get it cleaned up a little bit while Jeremy gets the dump truck ready to bring down to my house so I can use it to spread gravel on the driveway and get Vicky off my back. <laughs> Tess heard me pull in and came out to help hook up the trailer. I heard the sound of the best engine in the world oh my God. go by. I had to come out and see what was going on. <laughs> it wasn't long after we got the excursion hooked to the trailer that Buckwheat pulled in with the dump truck. So I immediately went out back and fired up the skid loader and began loading limestone on the truck so that we can use it to spread it on the driveway. The tree limbs and the low-hanging power line out in front of the house make it difficult to tailgate stone on this driveway. So I typically just have seven axle trucks come in and dump it, and then I reload on the little single axle and tailgate it that way. Once I get the majority of the driveway covered, I'll go back with the loader tractor and use the box grader to level out any high spots and use the front end loader to touch up all the smaller areas like the apron at the end of the driveway. Well, I've done about all the damage I can do for right now until I get some more stone in back here. I'm out. Uh, I got another load coming from Martin's. Should be here in a little bit. About an hour later, Martin's trucking backed in with a seven axle dump truck to drop a load of stone so me and Tess can spread some more on the driveway. So this is something new you don't get to do every day? No, definitely not. <laughs> so we're gonna tailgate a little bit of limestone on the other side of the driveway. I just had a load of stone come in. I've been waiting on, and I wanna try and get this driveway all tuned up before we go to PRI. Vicky's been raising hell about the mud. That's 
means the hydraulic pump's running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the bed up. I'm gonna preload stone against the tailgate so that it's already back there. I'll let the bed down just a little bit. Once I had the vast majority of the driveway covered in fresh stone, I got the skid loader out to try and touch up some of the smaller areas that I can't do with a truck. This is the kind of work that I did for a living since I was 17 years old. It's the only thing I've ever been really good at, other than working on race cars and tuning carburetors. Everything was going really good until Buckwheat showed up and I shut the machine off for a few minutes to talk to him. And then that's when all the problems started. Obviously, I don't use this equipment every day like I used to, but this thing's had a problem for the last three years and I haven't gotten it fixed. We bought a starter for this like three years ago. Why well, isn't it in it? We've been to put it on <laughs> for like three years. Where'd he go? Right he's, he's holding the starter's water. hand. It's not getting any fuel. One problem led to another. The starter's given trouble, and I think there's a problem with the fuel system as well. I hopped out of the machine to let Jeremy take a look at it while I helped Vicky load up mailbags. How'd you do it? Gotta be smarter than the machine. <laughs> Vicky backed her Suburban up to the shop door, and Rob and I helped her load up all these mailbags to take to the post office. Once we had Vicky taken care of, I jumped back into John Deere to try my best to get the driveway finished up before dark and before company comes. Tonight's the first night that Billy and Molly have had an opportunity to bring little Wyatt over to Grandma and Grandpa's house. I worked on the driveway until almost dark. I finally got everything finished up and then went in to visit with everybody who came down to see the baby. With the 427 engine giveaway behind us and the driveway all taken care of, it's finally time for us to head out to Indy for the PRI show. Hello. Hello. It's snowing. It is. Are you so excited yes. it's snowing? I'm so excited it's snowing. <laughs> Hello. 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 It's snowing. It is snowing. It's so exciting. So I have two phones on me right now and it's tricky to film because I'm supposed to film with my new phone. Keep grabbing but this the old one. still feels natural. <laughs> you ready to get in some trouble? We're getting in trouble? <laughs> yeah, we're getting in trouble. No, never. <laughs> Last night, we unloaded Tess and Tony's Mustang out of their enclosed and loaded Billy's S10 so that we can haul it over to Indianapolis for the PRI show. It's about a three and a half hour drive from our house to the convention center and the Lucas Oil Stadium where we need to drop the truck. And thankfully, we made it without a problem. We are at Lucas Oil Stadium, just south of downtown Indianapolis. And we are about to try to figure out where we need to go. I think I see it to the right. So I should be uh, navigating, but <laughs> I'm not doing my job. No, you're all right. I'm doing my other job. Go in there, job. but it's the next one. We're close. I think we're right here where we need to be. I was here last year with the Malibu, so. Oh yeah, you know where we're going. I had no idea. Yeah, so I've, I've kind of been through this process once before. 
The first step of this process is to get in line behind the Lucas Oil Stadium and present your credentials to an official in this tent. Then they give you a parking pass and tell you where to go. I was telling Tess on the way here that I feel like everyone will be a lot more friendly to us when she's with us. True or false? True. True. I'm gonna try and prove you wrong. <laughs> it's been blatantly obvious so far in this trip Anytime we come in contact with any of the officials, when they see Tess in the passenger seat, they're a lot more friendly. There we go. Hi. Hello. 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 Once we had our parking pass, the next step is to wait in line until one of the officials tells us to take the truck and trailer up to the convention center and unload. Depending on where your booth is in the show, there are several different unloading areas. Ours happen to be the green lot right next to the Marriott Hotel. At this point, everything has gone perfectly smooth and we have had no problems until it's time to take the truck out of the trailer and take it inside. Initially, the truck fired right up. We backed it out of the trailer, let it warm up, and then we got in line to wait to get inside the convention center. But unfortunately, someone's having a problem getting their car unloaded on the loading dock. I eventually had to shut the truck off so that it wouldn't run out of fuel, and then it refused to restart. However, we weren't the only ones having trouble getting an engine to start out in this cold, damp December weather. Eventually, we rounded up enough people to help us push the S10 up the loading dock and into the convention center. Somehow, I don't think we would have had as much help if it weren't for Tess. It's definitely easier to find help when she's hanging around. Anyway, we finally got the little S10 pushed up into the melling booth just before 3.30. And by the time we got it centered on the carpet, we all needed a drink. How was that trip? I feel like it was more effort to get from outside the building to inside than it was to get from your house to here. Let me tell you something. <laughs> oh no. If it had that, instead of that fuel injection, you would have driven it in here. <laughs> All of it. All of it. As soon as I seen the charger go 11.3, I was like, it doesn't let those smart phones fire. Right, let's go get this truck and trailer moved and good damage. Thankfully, the rest of the process went a lot easier. We got the trailer dropped off in the holding lot, and then it was time to head to dinner. Now this weekend, Robbie's decided to be our culinary scout and tour guide for the PRI event. And he's planning on doing something he's going to call Big Rob's Food Chronicles. And it starts right now at the Weber Grill, downtown Indianapolis, night one of PRI. On Big Rob's Food Chronicles, <laughs> the first eatery of PRI weekend. Weber Grill. Weber Grill. We're gonna find out whether Robbie knows his shit or not. We're gonna find out in Big Rob. Food Chronicles of PRI. Now y'all may think this is a funny skit, but really Rob's put a lot of effort into finding the best places to eat and giving his honest opinion. Let's cook just how you like it. Oh, that's my steak. Oh. All right, first impressions. Pretty good, Robbie. Let's I don't know how good the food is, but so far I'm pretty impressed. Got America AF back there. That has to be the coolest grill I've ever seen in my life. Rob was definitely happy. I was happy. Tess. I don't know. So I think it's a first successful meal at PRI. I would call that a success. Mine was good. Mine was really good too. Even though we had to switch fries and, and, a, and a baked potato. Well, but, I, I got a baked potato, but it had a whole bunch of crap on it, but I don't know what it is, so yeah. I just shoved it out of the way. Robbie's like, I'll trade you my fries. I'm like, deal. <laughs> so, night number one, PRI. Great food. Weber so, Grill. Weber Grill, downtown Indianapolis. Is this good, Tess? Tess. Okay. Yeah. Even the appetizers, the appetizers are really good. And, yeah, pretzel sticks. Yeah, no, pretzel sticks. You got pretzel, pretzel sticks. sticks. Pretzel sticks. I got the egg roll, brisket egg rolls. Tess got, what'd you get? Uh, Brussels sprouts with cheese. And so everybody knows, Bill tried something new. Stay tuned to watch. Hello. Hello. <laughs>
What are we doing, Robbie? We're gonna go get something to eat. Yeah, for episode two of Big Rob's Chronicles. Food Chronicles. Food Chronicles. Don't yeah, get yeah, the yeah. name wrong. Yeah, sorry. Jeez. Cut. Wait, let's redo it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so day two, PRI. Yeah. We're about to go on our next journey of Big Rob's Food Chronicles. We found a good place that was on diners, dives, and drive-ins. From the reviews, it looks like it's gonna be amazing. You really have done your homework. I have done my homework. You're taking this serious. I am. I'm going. I'm already in process of figuring out for dinner. So we leave the Airbnb Wednesday morning and head out for breakfast. According to the GPS, it's only about a five-minute drive. At least it's a short train. What is a short train? Are you sure? I think it's ten. I think it's ten. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It seems like every time I come to a railroad crossing, I get stopped at one. Anyway, it appears our breakfast destination is on the wrong side of the tracks, both figuratively and literally. Ready? I think I'm ready. What are your predictions? It's got to be good. It's been here since... Oh, look, he's done it. It's got to be good. He's... Since 1960. 1960? I think, I think that's what he said. Yeah, you don't have a business. He's taking this very there. serious. Look at him. He is. <laughs> Day two, Big Rob's Food Chronicles of PRI. We are at the steer in. Big Rob's Food Chronicles. You ready for this? I think I'm ready for this. All right, let's try this. Let's try this. So we make our way inside to check this place out. Robbie's pretty excited about it. Me and Tess, eh, hello. 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 It's so strange to walk in someplace and everybody stares at Tess. <laughs> see, see look. Tess definitely sticks out in a rough neighborhood, as bad or worse as a SWAT team. Oh, they're coming for us. The SWAT What's team's coming in behind you. Uh, we didn't do it. Uh, I don't care if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Although the area is rough, the food is extremely good. Biggest my head. <laughs> right after the waitress brought our food out, I realized we had a serious problem. Uh, we have a slight problem. I don't take the keys out of anything, and Tess takes the keys out of everything and locks everything. But I was driving, and I left the keys in the ignition on accident and test lock the door. So currently our keys are locked in the excursion. It just so happens that being in this rough neighborhood and having Tess with us worked out in our favor. What's that? One of the sheriff's deputies came to her rescue. Hi. Wow. <laughs> the official review. On right. a scale of one to 10. 12. 12. Security was on point. Security was on point. We get here, we get out, they didn't lock it. So I was closing the door, realized it wasn't locked, opened it, hit the lock button, we go inside. I'm thinking, hey, there's a SWAT team here, maybe one of them's got a Slim Jim. So I turn around, I'm like, hey, one of you guys happen to have a Slim Jim? Yeah, we got one. I said, well, there's a little blonde out there crawling around underneath that, that excursion. She needs a little help. Oh, wouldn't you know, they just jumped right, one oh, guy just jumped right up. <laughs> he said, I got a few minutes. And, okay, I got a few minutes. So this guy comes out and he thought Tess was stealing the catalytic converter off of it at first. I, yeah, he came out and I had both arms like wrapped around the tire trying to feel the leaf spring. And <laughs> like my hand, I stood up and my hands were black. My sleeves are still but black. But he got it. Yeah, he got it in like, like that. two seconds. I was, I was like, hey, can I film you undoing this? And he was like, yeah, sure. So I pulled my phone out, hit record, and he hit the unlock button. Huh. That was it. Perfect. Onward. So Wednesday afternoon, after the breakfast fiasco, we all head back to the convention center. Tess, Tony, and Rob don't have their credentials yet. So they wanted to go in and get that taken care of before there's a huge crowd of people there tomorrow. Once everybody had their credentials they needed for the week, it was time to go out and meet up with Jimmy Dale and the guys from Nitrous Express out in the convention center. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? Next, we went over to the Melling booth to see how Billy's S10 looked now that they have everything set up. Robbie wanted to make sure the truck was all cleaned up perfectly, so he got out the Jack's wax and polishing cloths and got to work. I, on the other hand, was checking out some stuff in the Melling booth and preparing to go live with Jimmy Dale. Still there's, no reason, there's no reason for us to do this this way. We could just be on the same camera on the same phone. No, because your big ass head takes up the whole camera. After the shit show with Jimmy Dale, I went scoping out some things that I wanted to look at, like this little booth with all these custom made signs. Dude, check this shit out. This is sick. We okay. gotta have some yeah. of this stuff. We gotta have this for the new shop for sure. We gotta do business with these people. Look at this back here too. 
Look, signature flag. 350, come on. Come on. Yeah. There's some really cool stuff here. They can make anything you want embossed, chrome plated, and backlit with LEDs. Yeah. Jeff -a -fa -fa will be so jealous. Jeff -a -fa -fa, here's your section. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of Jimmy Dale face cream to uh, keep the, the, you know, the, what do they call these? What do they call these? Crow's feet. No crow's feet on this Johnny right here, bud. Face cream. Yeah. What are you, 20 years I have old? Botox. I'm 34, bro. 34. I don't look like this guy. Look at that hand comparison. Yep. Face cream, no face cream. It's obvious. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm about to slide off my weird. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm afraid of. See? <laughs> and you want me to get on there. I ain't even trying. Do it. It's good. It's very stable. Come on, get off here before you hurt your ankle. <laughs> No, I'm not getting on. You gotta on get it. up a little higher. I already busted my ass yesterday.